Hi, my name is Jack Nguyen. I'm the R3 mechanical lead and today in this video I'll be showing you the basics of CADing with SOLIDWORKS and how to start designing a part with sketching. So when you first open up SOLIDWORKS, this will be the first screen you'll see. Um, if you don't see this little window here, you can just click on this uh, home button right there. And then to start, we'll just hit parts and it'll start a uh, part here. Um, so once you start this, um, at the bottom right here, uh, this is where you could change the units. So I have it set currently to millimeters, um, but automatically usually sets it to IPS, which is inches. Um, so just change that over there. And for the first thing, um, I'll quickly go over everything on this uh, GUI here. So um, the top bar here, you have your features, your sketches, different little tools that you could use in SOLIDWORKS um, to do different various things. In this case today, we're only going to be focusing on sketches. And then this left bar is called the design tree. So this here, as you make a part, you'll see the different edits and different features that you continue to add to that same part will start popping up here. Um, you can do different things on this design tree. There's different little tabs and folders, but I'll get to that in another video. As for now, to start the part, just click on the sketch tool here, and it's going to prompt you into choosing a plane. In this case, there's three planes, front, top, right plane. You can also access these planes on the design tree by clicking on this tab here. This drop down bar will open the design tree and you could choose those three planes. In this case, I'll just click on the top plane. It doesn't really matter, um, at least for what I'm doing today. So. Uh, I'm first going to start by showing you the different sketching tools. So the first one here is the line tool. A lot of these tools have drop downs because there's different variations of that same tool. In this case, click line. You can also click L on your keyboard. And basically that lets you just sketch a line. Um, it will continue until you close the line off. So in this case, I've just clicking once and then I could drag my mouse anywhere, click again, drag, drag, and then it'll stop uh, once I close it up. Or you could just click on escape on your keyboard and it will stop um, the line tool. Pretty straightforward. Next one is called a center line, um, which is also known as a construction line. Basically, these lines won't affect the actual part. So when you are, uh, for say, extruding, it will only extrude these lines. It will basically see these lines as invisible. So it won't actually um, affect any of your part making. Next one is the midpoint line. So this one, the difference between regular line and this one is that you start from the midpoint and then you pull it out from there. So pretty useful depending on what you want to make. Um, can be used with various things, but um, that's just one of the other tools. Next tool I'll be showing you is the uh, rectangle. So before I do that, if you want to get rid of these easily, you could select, uh, you could click and then drag while holding to select all the items. Click delete. There's two drags and select. So in this case, this is blue. But if you see, if I go to the left instead of the right, it's green. So the difference with this is the blue will only select whatever it's fully covering. So in this case, if you see, I'm covering this full, I'm going to be covering this full line here and it only selects that line. It doesn't collect, select anything else it touches. For the green one, it selects anything that it touches. So in this case, it's select this line, this line, these two lines, even if it's just touching it. But in that case, just delete everything there. Click delete on your keyboard. Next, I'll show you is the rectangle. So rectangle tool, you click on that and lets you basically make a rectangle. In this case, I have center rectangle selected. It should automatically be corner rectangle. So in this case, you start at corner, corner, pull it out. Um, both makes the same type of rectangle with these construction lines. Um, it's just the way of <clears throat> drawing them out, uh, either from the center or from a corner. 
Next tool I'll show you is the circle tool. Circle is really simple to use. This is similar to basically the center rectangle where you click from the center and then make the uh, radius of the circle. Um, very intuitive. There's different uh, there's another different feature of the circle tool, perimeter circle. This one you basically start from the perimeter instead of the center. And you get to choose the second point of the perimeter. Next tool I'll show you is the three point arc. Um, or well, actually just the arc itself. Um, so the first one is the center point arc, similar to how you make a center point circle. You start off from the center, choose the radius, and then in this case you get to draw how much of the arc you want. So in this case you could see um, A equals the degrees um, that you're drawing the arc on. Tangent arc is a little different. I won't be showing you that today. Uh, maybe in another video, but uh, you don't really need to get sophisticated with that. Next one is three point arc. This one's also similar to you. So it's similar to the perimeter where you choose one point of the perimeter, the second point of the perimeter, and then you would just choose uh, the um, amount of degrees that you want it to be. Um, pretty simple. You could still adjust them, uh, so it's no problem. Next tool will be the slot tool. So there's various types of slots. I'll quickly go over them because they're all pretty similar. Straight slot, basically you're going to make a line and then from that line you can pull out uh, the slot that you want. This is a very useful tool in design. Um, as you begin to grow and learn, uh, you'll be using this tool time to time. But for now, I'll just be showing you how to actually use it. So that one's basically um, a line tool, just a regular line that you make and then you, it creates the slot from there. The next one is a center point straight slot. So this is similar to use uh, similarly like the midpoint line. So you would start from the midpoint and then pull the line out and it would make a slot right there. Next one is the three point arc slot. So similar to the three point arc, the only thing is it makes a slot once you make that three point arc, just like that. And then the center point arc slot is similar to the center point arc. Um, you would just make a arc same way and it would just add a slot to it. All right. Next tool here will be the polygon. So the polygon basically lets you make any type of polygon. Of course, there's no two-sided polygon. So you got to start with three, which is going to be a triangle. And it would start from the center point and you would just pull it from there. Uh, whatever type of polygon you want. You could make it a square, make it a pentagon, make it a hexagon, etc. Whatever polygon you want. Um, it's very nice to use so you don't have to manually um, make all of these um, lines by yourself. All right, next tool. So I won't be showing splines because they're a little bit difficult to use. Uh, we don't really use it too much because um, a lot of it, uh, you can't really fix and define the shape of it. Um, but we'll go over the eclipse. Um, so this one, similar to a circle, you start from the center, choose one point, but then you're also able to choose the second point. So basically the width of the circle, if this here is the length. Um, and then there's also partial ellipse, so this is similar to the center point arc. The only difference is you're making an ellipse instead of an arc. So just like that. And then there's two things called parabola and uh, conic. Um, I won't be showing you those today, uh, but it's basically making a partial ellipse, but uh, either a parabola or a inverse of a parabola. All right. Other two tools are uh, sketch fillet and sketch chamfers. I don't use this too much. Um, I'll show you the uh, manual way of doing it with features, which is a little bit nicer than using these, so I'll skip over those today. All right, and then quickly I'll show you over. I'll show you the trim entities tool. So there's different methods of trim. When you click on this, you'll see um, on the left here there's like five different options. I mainly use power trim. Basically, this one. Um, if it's kind of hard to see, but as I'm clicking and holding my mouse there's a line that's following where my cursor is going and if I hit a point in case th that whole parabola it disappears if I didn't want to do that I could trace back to that red box there and it'll undo my action but the trim feature is useful if say you have an intersecting line so two lines intersecting them each other 
but I don't want this top part of the parabola. So I want to remove that only. And there's no way of just doing that by clicking and deleting it. You would have to use the trim entities tool. So you click on that, uh, click and hold until you hit that part and it will trim that top part of the, the parabola there. And say, I don't want this line here that intersects between my two uh, straight lines. So I could do the same thing and cut it out cut this out and basically just lets you cut portions that you don't want out so now I have a pretty unique unique shape just from using trim tools and two different uh, sketch features all right next tool I'll show you is the mirror entity tool so this one's really useful if you want to mirror two parts that you know are going to be identically reflected to each other so say I want um, I want some mounting holes and I know these two are gonna be um, not so uh, symmetric, so they'll be spaced differently. But then I know that whatever's on here will be reflected um, exactly on the other side. So instead of having to do them both like by drawing more circles and then dimensioning them all, you could just use the mirror entity tools. So in this case, I'll quickly show the smart dimension tool. It's really simple. You just have to choose two points to get it started um, and then just input your values. So one, two. Just random arbitrary values. You could do the same thing with just the radius of the circle. That's one click. Click on the just the um, perimeter and then he lets you set the diameter all right so we have um, some dimensions here they're still floating a bit so I'm going to fix that down using a center line so you could hit the center line like that and then if you click on the center line on the left you have line properties in this case I'm gonna choose the horizontal relations I'll go over another video where I'll show you the relations so you don't have to worry about that now all right, so mirror entity, to use it, you need a line or some type of plane or face that I can mirror to. In this case, I'm going to draw this center, uh, this construction center line here. Click mirror entity. Uh, you first select the entities you want to mirror, so those two circles, and then mirror about this line there, and it lets you make that mirror. So pretty straightforward to use. You just need um, some type of uh, line to mirror about. Next tool I'll show you is the sketch pattern. So there's two linear and circular. Linear is easy to use. You click on this, choose the entity you want to select. So at the bottom here, click on entities to pattern. Choose the one you want to pattern. So I'll choose these two circles. In this case is fixed to the x-axis. You would just change that to one. And then if I want it to the y, I would just choose how many I want to duplicate. In this case, I want three, and then the spacing here, so I could have them 30 millimeters spaced apart. And that's how you use the linear sketch pattern. For the circular sketch pattern, this is also really useful if you want um, to pattern uh, four holes. In this case, I'll show you what I mean. Four hole, uh, four circles around one point. So uh, I'll choose this point here that I want actually. I'll choose the entity first that I want to pattern, the circle, and then it, you get to choose the point you want to um, revolve it around. So in this case, what it's going to go around. Um, I could choose this one here, or just the origin, which is this red point. And then you could choose the degrees that you want it to. So in this case, it's usually 360, which will uh, make four circles. 300 uh, that go 360 degrees evenly spaced if you don't want it evenly spaced you could deselect evenly spaced and choose the angle that you want them to repeat so in this case it's 25 degrees apart each one all right so the circular sketch pattern was the last tool um, that I'll be showing you today uh, quickly go over the uh, smart dimension again so if you see a few of these parts are black and some of them are blue so the black ones mean means that they're fully defined the blue ones mean mean that they aren't defined so this means that with the blue one I'll still be able to move it because it's not defined yet but if I 
properly dimension it based on the origin. SolidWorks will see, oh, I know where this part is. I know where it's going based off of the origin. I'm going to define it from that point. So if I fully dimension it, it's black. You won't be able to move it because SolidWorks now, is known, now knows that, oh, I know where this part is. I know where it should be. It shouldn't move anywhere. And those are basically the main sketching features that you'll need to know for SolidWorks. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this was helpful. If you have any more questions and concerns, please uh, message me and give me a shout. Thank you.